Hi to South Korea from Germany. Dear Digital Health Innovators and Forerunners, my name is Armin and I'm very happy to talk with you today about why and how to enter the European digital health market. And also why now is the right time for. So that you know to whom you are talking today and from uh, what perspective I would like to share my experience and insights with you, I would first like to introduce myself and our company. So my name is Almin and I'm 42 years old. I am founder and CEO of the Digital Health Port. I have more than 20 years of experience in the field of healthcare through different leadership roles in sales and digitization for big, big medtech companies, but also as a member of different industry associations. Thanks to this work near the market, I also have a strong network of contacts in the healthcare sector, specifically in digital health. on the side of suppliers as well as on the side of the professional healthcare providers and all stakeholders involved. So if you want to get in touch with somebody specific, please let me know. I will try to give you an introduction directly or also indirect via a connection. But now let's have a look to our company, the Digital Health Port. Our digital health port is an innovator and specialized distributor for digital health solutions in Europe. For sure, some also call us accelerator or hub or something like this, but I prefer innovator and distributor because we also represent our partner companies in the market. It gives a better feeling for what we do and how we do it. But maybe at the end of our discussions, you can give me your insights on how you will call us. Would be really helpful to have that learning. Our headquarter is in the middle of Europe, in Germany. We have two offices there, near Hamburg and Stuttgart. In our company group, we have around 30 employees with the whole skill set to scale digital health solution from a single source. So this is marketing, sales, technical implementation, and also digital engineering. With that skill set, we can cover the full sales cycle from pre-sales to all after sales services including first and second level support. With our years of experience and our partner program, we also have a strong partner network in professional healthcare around Europe. So I hope that gives you a good understanding about the perspective from where I share my insights with you now let's talk about the why. Why should you scale your digital health solution in Europe? To bring some meat at the bone for our discussions about the why, I have picked out some statistic charts from different perspectives. So at the end we can put the dots together and build a strong why for you and your decision. First, I want to show you the global share of gross domestic product. Beside US and Asia, Europe is one of the three big economies. It's the green one. And as you can see, the distribution is more balanced. Not one dominant country, okay? 
This balance is not the important topic when we talk about the why, but later on when we talk about the how. So maybe you can have that in mind later on. On the next picture, you can see the share of GDP that is spent on health in Europe. In some countries like Germany, Switzerland or France, it is more than 10% of the GDP. So what we learn is from that chart that in European much money is spent for health. With that in mind, let's go deeper into the digital readiness of healthcare systems in Europe. So uh, there are different ways to measure the digital health readiness of a country. I picked two of them, think they give a good feeling about the situation. First, I want to show you the future health index from Philips. They ask about the percentage of healthcare professionals who currently use any digital health technology or mobile health apps. So for your information uh, from the colors, the blue ones are the forerunners and they are mostly placed in Asia. So congratulations to you. Um, Germany, for example, and South Africa are at the bottom of the list. Or let's say it in this way, these two countries have a, the biggest potential for growth in the field of digital health. So, for example, Germany has 64% and South Africa 48% beside China with 94%, so nearly full digitalized. The second figure I want to show you is the digital health index. So another way to measure it, but it also gives the same feeling. How good is a digital, the digital health uh, developed in a country? And the digital health index is from the German Bottelsmann uh, Stiftung and it also shows an index how well the countries are already already developed in this area and as you see in that statistic countries such, such as Switzerland France and Germany are far behind so they are on place 40, 15, 16, and 17. Germany, for example, has a digital health index from 30% out of 100. Or uh, if, you, if you make a benchmark to Estland, it's 81.9%. And when you when you when you think back about the slide before, I showed you the countries with the highest share expenditures on health. So these are also nearly the same country. So maybe there is a relation between that numbers and that push pushes the sense of urgency in that countries. As we now understand that there is a need and market potential, let's talk about who, who can develop such digital health solutions and bring it to the market. Therefore, I want to show you two graphics where the tech knowledge and companies come from who can develop such digital health technologies. On the first chart you see the top 15 global tech giants by market capitalization in different fields. Purple are the ones from US, pink from Asia 
and green from Europe. So if you can find green. As most colors are pink and purple, it's also not Europe that has the lead in, the, in that field. So it is more likely that Europe will become an even larger import market for health tech solutions. This is reinforced by the fact that more money is being invested in digital health in US and Asia. Let's have a look on the next chart that shows the funding of digital health splitted by regions. Blue is US, purple is Asia and orange is Europe. What stands out? Investment in digital health grows strongly, so this is the good the good thing here. But where does the growth come from? Mostly from US and Asia, but not Europe. So this increased the probability that Europe will become an import market for digital health solutions and is not able to develop on their own the most of that digital health solutions. So this is the second chart I want to talk with you and, and show you regarding uh, where does that solutions come from. So let's summarize our findings. Why scale in Europe? Europe has a big share of the global GDP and also European countries has a high has high expenditures on health. They have much money in their healthcare systems. But on the other hand, digital health is not well developed yet in Europe. And tech or even digital health tech will become an import market for Europe. And the conclusion is that now it's a good time for South Korean digital health companies to tap this potential for international scale. Also because internationalization is a big leverage for companies equity story and value creation. So as we now have hopefully a common sense about the why let us now switch to the how. So on the how to scale in Europe, you first have to understand that Europe is not one country. It is many countries with many languages and many different health systems. But yes, for sure with the European Union, on the way to standardize through through that. If we look at the languages, then I want to show you a picture of the multitude of possibilities there are in Europe to say hello in native language. So as you see there, there are more than 20 possibilities to do so. So my first recommendation for you is focus on one country when entering the European market. And we are talking about um, healthcare system. So it's more important if you enter the healthcare system to focus on native language as healthcare professionals normally do not international business business and therefore do not practice English on a daily basis. And if we now have a look on the different languages in the European Union and what are the native languages are want to share with you some insights about what 
we what languages are spoken in Europe or especially in the European Union. So most spoken language is English, but but it's the foreign language, not the native language, not the most spoken na native language. So 30% speak na native English. And for example, German, 80% speak native German and 14% as a foreign language. French, 12%, Italian, 30% and so on and so on. So when it now comes to the Brexit, English is becoming less important as a native language. So this is before the Brexit. And uh, my conclusion and my how-to recommendation is Germany is a good option for you to enter the European market as it is the most spoken native language in Europe. So when we are talking about German as an opportunity for the market entry in Europe, I there are more reasons than just the language because there are different initiatives from the government to push digital health. So for example, there is the Digital Care and Nursing Modernization Act, uh, so DVPMG, so it's law, and it has passed the official procedure in May 21, so it's very fresh, but it pushes digital health. And it also sets the regulatory framework for telemedicine and uh, digital identities, digital health and care application. So yes, it brings more pressure for implementation of digital health to the players, to the, to the healthcare players in the market. Um, also, digital health apps on prescription, we call it in Germany DIGA and DIPA. And what is important for you to know, Germany is the first country in the world to prescribe digital apps. And with this prescription, they are reimbursed through the statutory health system. Next important thing uh, that pushes digital health in Germany is the Hospital Future Act. So the short version is KHZG. So this you can find in Germany as a yeah shorten. So and 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 it brings 4.3 billion uh, euro government funding for the digitization of German hospitals. And for that government funding, there are different uh, funding conditions and fields uh, where hospitals can invest that funding. So there are um, it is 11 parts where they need to invest. So for example, they can use that government funding for modernization of emergency rooms, for digital patient portals, electronic documentation, clinical support system, digital medication management, internal digital service request, cloud computing system, digital supply system for bed distribution, telemedicine networks, um, IT security, and but also digitalization of patient records. So as you see, it is not just about the native language, it's also that Germany now pushes digital health and invests much money, but also builds a strong uh, framework for digit digitalization in healthcare. So this is also important for you because now it's a good time to use that momentum. So what is my conclusion through our discussions? First, it's a good time to scale your digital health solution in Europe. I recommend to focus on one country for the beginning. 
And what I strongly recommend is to bring native speakers in place to do the go-to-market. Because professional healthcare uh, people don't speak that good English or even South Korean. And Germany is an interesting country to start with your go-to-market in Europe and with your internationalization. So, and if you don't want to do that, go to market on your own or build your own strategy in, in, in Germany, we can support you with our digital health port and our services through the go to market. Especially, therefore, we have two different uh, services. The first we call Discovery Boot Camp. Within the Discovery Boot Camp, we co create your go to market within a duration of one to eight weeks, so depending on what you what you what you expect and, and how we do it. It's on site in Germany. One person of your company comes to Germany embedded in our office and infrastructure, including accommodation and transfer. And within your time in Germany we do joint customer meetings together around Germany. We will share with you some market insights, but also intercultural training. So this is our first service if you want to make that go to market in, in Europe. Our other service we call uh, Proof of Market Sprint. Within that service package, it is more an outsourced go to market we do for you. It has a duration of 100 days. We do the full sales cycle from lead generation, sales pitches to closing, implementation, first, second level support. So all the things that is need for a digital health solution. And what we also do to involve you is a big biweekly virtual project meeting and regularly reportings. So this is our second opportunity for you if you don't want to build a subsidiary for the beginning and have an, an, an easy and fast way to test the market in Europe. So now I'm at the end of my presentation and I hope it was interesting for you and give you some good insights of, uh, to make some decisions on internationalization in Europe. If you have any further question, please contact me so we can discuss further and your specific uh, questions and, and, and topics on my contacts, uh, contact data you can find on that slide here, email address, phone, or you can also connect on LinkedIn with me or check our website. Hope uh, you have a good time now with uh, on, the, on the next rise 2021 and good insights also from the other presentations. Greetings from Germany. Bye bye.